Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and uh, wanted to take another look at this film. I know I've done reviews of this film in the past, but sort of spread the word around on this film, because it's a gem of a movie that I think deserves a lot more recognition, a lot more talk. It's Death Machine. It feeds on you for a cool cover art. This is one of those rare instances where it has a cool cover. At least I think it is. And the movie does not suck. Because, I will admit, Death Machine, I remember, I thought the first time I saw it, I only saw clips of the end. And for some reason, for the longest time, I thought this movie had a really depressing ending. I don't know why. Maybe I was drunk. Even though I don't drink. <laughs> and I was probably like, I don't know, underage, so... I don't know what the deal was. So, uh, my friends, Efri and Mike, had talked about this film. I'm like, nah, I don't know. Do you chase that? I don't know. Do you chase that? I don't know. Nah, nah. <clears throat> I'm like, I fucked it. <clears throat> I'll give it a chance. Watch it on, uh, watch it somewhere, and I'm like, wow, this is really good. Death Machine is directed by Stephen Norrington. This is before he did Blade. He wrote and directed this film which was 1994, I think. And then he went on to get the job for Blade, the first Blade film. Much deserved, because... this Sci-Fi Channel needs to take a look at this film. This film was a low-budget film. I can't imagine this was a big-budget film. It was from Trimark. For crying out loud. And all it is is you have this girl, uh, Ellie Poudier, Poudier? I'm not sure how to pronounce her name. Probably she carried her tail. And apparently, she's been brought in to this company to see what's going on. Because there's this outcry from the public that there's this... Basically, this is a shank industries. They sort of produce uh, military hardware, stuff like that. But they said, oh, there's this vile new weapon where you know they put someone in this heavy-duty armor and that apparently it went crazy and went on a massacre and Kale she you know she thinks no we're not doing that we'll give you full access we'll tell you everything then she finds out that things are sort of not as kosher as they say and yeah Brad Dourif as this crazy uh, you know, crazy person crazy sort of calm inventor scientist has this long hair Character's name, I think, is Dante. And he helped create this. And he's also creating a secret and a Vault 10 a secret thing that no one else is looking at. And other people are kind of scared of the guy. And she's like, this guy never comes in. She, he never gives us any reports. We need to fire him. Brad Durf sort of gets wind of this. And for some reason, his character sort of takes an initial liking almost an obsessed liking to our main female hero, which I know this girl was also in that film, Endless Descent, also known as The Rift. And she was, she does great here as the lead. I really enjoyed her. At first, in the first opening, you know, but she quickly came into her own and um, was a strong woman, was likable. I, I enjoyed her performance. And when she got her hair curled bad. She sort of had a little Sarah Connor thing going on, so I like that. Um, and he, she ultimately is going to try to fire this person, Brad Dourif. And there's a point where she steals another guy, this prick guy, which is also the same prick guy from the film Doom. The sort of skittish asshole marine in Doom. That's the, the asshole in this movie. Uh, she steals his car, and she needs to look into it. And Brad Dourif finds out, and later decides to test his new weapon on this guy. And, I don't know if you can see this. Look at that. That is entirely 100% practical. No CGI. And this thing, you see the whole thing. And it's chasing after, and it has its vision, and it's going through walls, and... It like senses your fear, like pheromones, and it goes through walls, 
It's not blood and guts gore. Now, I don't know if stuff was cut out, because apparently this is a 99 minutes long. Apparently, there's another cut that's over two hours long. There's another cut that's 111 minutes long, so it's 10 minutes longer. Quote the director's cut. There's even another cut that's like 85 minutes long. I don't know why there's so many cuts. This is the 99 minute one. So I don't know if there's stuff cut off. Apparently there's some... You look it up, they say there's some controversy like in other countries for the violence. I'm like, I don't see guts and stuff. So I don't know if there was more. I don't know. I mean, it's definitely rated R, but it's not like blood and guts and stuff. But it's hard, you know, really it makes you appreciate that when it's done practical, how fucking good it looks. And this machine looks good practical. And you, you can see the whole thing, bits and pieces, or the when it's the whole thing, it's practical. I didn't see any, C, there's no CGI at all. If there's any animation or anything, I didn't see anything at all. I mean, they use miniatures, they use practical, you know, I just really amazes me that low-budget film can do this but yeah, you look at sci-fi channel, even big budget films, they can't do it. I don't understand. Um, I don't try to put a link to the trailer down below. So definitely check out the trailer and then check out my review. I probably should have said at the beginning. Um, also, I know this is uploaded by Dram707. That's how I was able to see it. So I'll put his link to his channel and you can look up Death Machine if you want to take a look. It's well worth a look because... Um, then you get these uh, fun characters, uh, which you find out they're actually pacifists, like they're uh, sort of, not eco-terror, but like, they want to protect, they're pacifists, but at the same time they're kind of stoners as well, and, you know, they're, they want to, you know, be the good guys, and, you know, this evil corporation, they want to stop and blow up its information. And, like, they have guns, but there's actually blanks in it. And, like, you have one guy whose actual character name is Sam Raimi. Uh, played by John Sherrion. And I really enjoyed this guy. Sort of the other... Yeah, I really enjoyed this guy. Apparently he was in The Machinist. He had a small role in The Fifth Element. He was in, I guess, Saving Private Ryan. Uh, Fortress 2 as Hickey. He was actually in Lost in Space as a character called Noah Freeman. I'm not sure who that was. I don't remember Lost in Space too much, the movie. But he's a lot of fun because um, basically they go in they try, and Brad Durser tricks them into opening the vault where his big old machine is in. And basically the rest of the film is a cat mouse. Where you have uh, the lead girl, you have this guy, John Sherrion. Um, you have another guy. There was three guys and one of their friends gets killed pretty quickly. So it's the girl, the guy, and then his friend, a character called Utani. Probably a take on Whalen Utani from Alien. And this is a guy, Martin McDougal. He's been done bits and pieces and stuff too. Guess he had a bit role in Judge Dredd. Another bit. He also had a bit role in The Fifth Element. But he has like this weird sort of red. I don't know if you call it tattoo or whatever, like across his face and over his eye, and like. It's almost like this. This sort of like almost this carries almost like a parody on action film guys because, like he takes a knife and like, like presents the knife to the girl, the lead girl, so she can take this implant out. He's kind of clumsy. Like he's get ready, let's go. He walks and then he gets shot in the shoulder. He's ready to go and he bumps his head. Um, there's a moment I. I didn't catch until now where him and the lead girl about ready to blow the shit out of the, the, the creature, the, the robotic, you know, the death machine. Before in the open fire, he says, show your kids. I'm like, That's a, oh my God, he's saying fucking street fire too. Sure. Yeah. Show your kid. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. That's like, oh shit. That's mean. Sure you did, you know, when you do the uppercut on fucking Ryu Ken, you do the uppercut, he actually says, why? Um, and then the other guy, John Sherrion, he, uh, it's a Kanji Mountain, 
Because also with this fat fuck who is at, who's an asshole turns coats on them. And like you have this fun scene in the elevator where the practical creature busts in, going through the elevator door, great cuts, editing, the, the practical and really creepy looking, you know, hardcore machine. This really good looking machine goes after them, close calls, grabs the, the fat foot, has these crazy, like this is actually in the mood, this is what it has, it's a, it's practical. It digs into the guy, the fat guy, and pulls him in down through the bottom of the elevator shaft and they both fall. And a lot of cat mouse, they find this area where they have the, the suit that we see at the beginning, the, the test suit that went amok. It's like this last resort and the John Sharon guy sort of fits himself in. It's one of those things where I guess the, the company, this is their future weapon where they take someone, they wipe their memory, and they give them all the info. Kind of like the stuff before the Matrix, give them all the info of, you know, weapons and tactics and like this hardcore armor suit and he goes in to hunt down the creature. It's the same creature, but the death machine. And when Brad Dirk pops in there, it's a lot of fun. Brad Dirk has a lot of huge, humongous fun. It's definitely one of his best performances in the film, Brad Dirk. Just a lot of fun. Like there's a mole where she has a gun on him, and he gets down, and she does... He's like, okay, all right. Gotcha, time of the month. You know, I never understood that, you know. But he has a lot of fun with his role. Um, later on, it's like, you know, we're, we're connected. And then she says, yeah, like a chainsaw up my ass. And <laughs> fucking bites him. Um, a lot of fun, a lot of bad, uh, good cat and mouse. Uh, the guy, the Utani guy and the lead girl run down this corridor. And John Sharon's battle suit comes in. She's like, no, and he shoots a big old fucking rocket that goes right by him, goes around curves, blows the shit out of the machine, and fly, which flies back. A lot of firepower shooting at the creature, all practical. The guy in the body armor actually has a big old fist fight with the creature, the death machine. Boom, 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 boom. Kits in and it flies back, all practical. Um, the scene with the elevator outside, and she's shooting the shit out of it, and practical sparks, uh, squibs, and shooting the elevator goes down. Then you have this asshole cop, horrible actor. I, I kind of did not like this cop character because he looks up and he goes, holy donuts. I'm like, what the fuck is that? But it redeems itself because the creature fucking lands on his sorry ass, stomps his ass, and they're throwing explosives and shit. And the ending is a lot of fun. It's a lot of great ending because they stick Brad Dourif in that damn vault. And they have the machine in there. And basically, as the, the guy now, he's sort of, you know, he's still in the suit, but he's got his mind back. And the the Utah guy, unfortunately, got killed before. Uh, the lead girl and the, the Raimi guy, John Sharian, Door closes in on Brad Dourif, and he's stuck in there with the machine. And she pushes the button, and then it just the camera just focuses right on the door of the vault where Brad Dourif's stuck in with that big old thing. And you can probably tell it probably killed Brad Dourif's ass. But uh, all in all, Death Machine is a fucking fun, entertaining film. It's low, low budget, but fuck. Not in a bad way. Not in a bad way. This is a... If you see this film and the first half, you're like, yeah. Or the first third of the film, you're like, yeah, what, what's Matt talking about? Stick with this movie. Stick with it until the end and you will be entertained. Because it takes a little bit going and when it gets going, it gets going. I mean, you know, fun, entertainment, action. I just, I'm amazed... I was amazed when I saw this film that, you know, you get these gems and you're like, why the fuck is this film not known more? I really don't understand it. And from Trimark, this is probably the best film. I think probably, this is the best film Trimark came out with. I mean, 
all I can think of Trimart is fucking Leprechaun. And uh, if you like Leprechaun, that's cool. I do not like Leprechaun. This is a fuck a little better than Leprechaun. Any of them. Great, um, fun characters. I like the lead. Uh, Brad Durf has a lot of fun with his villain role. I like the John Sharon, Martin Medudo. I like their sort of, uh, pacifist guys. Even when he gets charged up before they put his mind into the thing. He's like, oh, one more thing. I'll be back. So this film has a lot of fun with itself, but it's not a parody. It's definitely rated R, although you don't see, like, blood and guts and gore, which I would like to have seen, so I don't know if the other cuts, the same cuts has that in it. I don't know. But entertaining, likable leads, great villain and Brad Dourif, excellent, uh creature practical of this death machine one of my favorite robots in a movie by far now after seeing this film unfortunately all this has is trailer and that sucks Michael Keane if he's out there I definitely suggest you check it out anyone out there definitely suggest you check this out a lot of fun a lot of entertainment and badass movie so I thank Ephraim and Mike for letting me know about this movie way back when. It was fun watching this movie again. Um, and definitely check it out. It was well worth your time. Then go back to the link below of Dram 707s channel. He has it uploaded. Just type in, you know, Death Machine, Dram 707, or go to his channel. And when you search for his videos, just do Death Machine. You'll find it. Um, and uh, you, I think you will be surprised. And think, why doesn't Sci-Fi Channel do shit like this? If Sci-Fi Channel mimicked this kind of movie, Sci-Fi Channel would be a better fucking state. Be a better state than it is. Just my opinion. But either way, thanks for watching, and take care. Later.